In this lesson, I am going to talk about the difference between the poor and rich in how they handle and use the power of debt. Hello and welcome to day number 26 of the 30 Keys of Wealth. The 30 Keys of Wealth is a free course here on YouTube that will teach you how to use ancient hermetic principles and techniques to manifest money and riches into your life over the course of 30 days. If you have stumbled upon this lesson without having watched any of the previous lessons, please make sure to go and do that first. There is a link in the description of this video that will take you to a complete playlist containing all the 30 lessons in the correct order. Before we begin today's lesson, I must put up a bit of a disclaimer first. This is not financial advice. Alright, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the actual lesson. Debt. A couple of lessons ago I actually got a question, and he was asking a question about debt. We talked about, of course, the nature of money, but today it is time to sort of look at the other side of money. But is there really another side? Because debt really is just an amount of money or an amount of energy that you owe someone or someone owes you. The way the poor tend to use debt is in a non-constructive way. They tend to use debt in a over the long term measured destructive way. For example, they try to buy a house or a car that they can't really afford. And they use debt to buy this. And now they're stuck spending a lot of their earned money on paying off this debt over many years. Now, homes generally increase in value, so perhaps it's not that bad of an idea to purchase a house or real estate with debt. But it usually is quite a bad idea to purchase things like cars or clothes or anything that does not appreciate in value over the years. Buying things that don't increase in value is a bad way to use debt, and that is unfortunately what a lot of people do nowadays. Of course, an infamous example is credit card debt. Credit card debt is through the roof and it is limiting a lot of people in becoming financially free because they will be chained to this credit card debt for a long time and it becomes especially bad when people start to get other credit cards to pay off their other credit cards. And they do this in the following way. They use other people's money, they use other people's energy in order to buy things or build things. For example, they use debt to acquire companies. These companies produce more money than it costs to pay off the debt over the long term, and at the same time the value of these companies increases. And they are able to do this because the rich know how to use money constructively. They know how to use debt constructively. Really, when you look at it, the difference between someone who is rich and someone who is poor is that the rich just know how to manage and steward money in a more constructive way than the poor. If for some reason all the wealth in the world, all the money in the world, got equally distributed, everybody got all the wealth from Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, all the richest people, it was all perfectly equally distributed. Everyone in the world had the same amount of money. It wouldn't even take five years for all that wealth to go back to the same rich people, because they simply know how to handle handle it far more constructively than most other people. And we will talk about this in the future, about how being rich and wealthy is not actually about owning money, but it is much more about being. The money is just an after effect of being wealthy. You must be wealthy first before you get a lot of money. A famous example of people that don't realize how debt works was a couple of years ago when, if I recall correctly, a piece of Donald Trump's tax returns or financial information was leaked. And in there, it was found that he was $400 million in debt. And everybody thought this was very crazy. This was, you know, he, he, he's not rich at all. He's $400 million in debt. But what they didn't say is, of course, that his assets were worth far more than that debt. You see, most rich people have a lot of debt. People that are worth $100 million probably have the same amount in debt as well. And that is because they've used that debt to build their companies. If you borrow 400 million and you acquire a company that is worth that amount, but that a company doubles in value in the same year, you still have 400 million in debt, 
but you also own a company worth 800 million. And this is also the secret about becoming rich relatively quickly. People that tell you you can become rich quick by becoming an eBay seller or doing something like drop shipping, uh, I'm sorry, but they're really full of shit. The only way to become rich really quickly is to constructively use debt, to use other people's money to acquire assets that will increase in value. If you want to acquire some serious wealth, wealth that usually takes an entire generation to create, anywhere above $30 million, let's say, personally, I don't see a way you can achieve that wealth in a quick span of time, let's say five, 10 years, if you're currently coming from like an average income background without using constructively debt and other people's money. If your goals are lower, like one to five million, then that can be quite easily achieved without using debt. And if your goals are in that region, then I probably would advise you not to use debt, because of course, debt is a double-edged sword. You need to know how to use it constructively, otherwise it can end up consuming you and you can lose more money than you gain. Again, this is not financial advice. Use your own brain. I'm just telling you what most truly wealthy people have done and are doing using debt. Currently, interest rates are quite low, meaning that it is very cheap to acquire debt. And that is exactly what you've been seeing over the past two to three years. A lot of rich people, a lot of wealthy people have acquired large amounts of debt to buy assets. And this is one of the reasons why stock prices have gone up so quickly over the past years or two. Now, of course, this usually means that you will get a lot of inflation. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. Prices are going up. But that really is only a bad thing for the poor and middle class. The rich love inflation inflation because, as we've talked about before, the rich have a lot of debt. If you have 400 million in debt and you own a couple billion dollars in assets, then inflation is wonderful because your debt will be reduced to almost nothing. And at the same price, the value of your assets are going up, at least on paper. Of course, in the previous lessons, we've talked about the principle of rhythm and that the rich recognize opportunities and always use them. Currently, in my opinion, low interest rates are a massive opportunity. And when interest rates are low, that is also the same time you see the most self-made millionaires be created. Low interest rates really are, in my opinion, one of the best tools that you can use in order to go from poor or middle class to someone who is really considered rich or wealthy. Now, of course, you can use debt to speculate. You can try to get a loan of a million dollars and try to buy crypto or something like that. But that is not something I would advise. Again, none of this is official financial advice, but what I personally have done and would do again is to buy assets that are producing enough cash flow in order to pay off the interest payments. And at the same time, these assets should be increasing in value every year. If you have those two criteria, then most likely it will be a very constructive way of using debt. Of course, there are always risks, so again, use your brain. But if you stick to all the 30 laws of wealth and you use the principle of debt, then there's a very good chance that you will be able to create some massive wealth in a relatively short time. Your homework is if you have bad credit, fix it. If your goals are to become truly wealthy, as I said before, you most likely will require other people's money. You will need to use and leverage debt. The better your credit is, the more debt you will be able to use. So again, if you have those large goals of a net worth anywhere above $5 million, you're probably going to need to use debt constructively. So begin to build good credit now. Even if you currently don't want to go and borrow one or $2 million, you might want in the next couple of years. If you begin to build good credit now, then that will be an incredibly useful thing you can use in a couple of years. If you are participating in the full 30-day course and you found this lesson valuable, please consider leaving a like on this video. It helps a lot in making sure YouTube shows this video to other people who might be interested in this. If you have any questions related to this lesson, post them down below in the comments. You can watch the next lesson by clicking on this next video or the playlist by checking the links in the description. Thank you for watching.